Will democracy survive in the next couple of years? And essentially we are the same. And there are so many needs that Minnesota has. What people are saying they need right now. Access to democracy is made possible by donations from the following organizations. Thomson Reuters, a global company with expertise and insight to unravel complex situations in the areas of law, tax, compliance, government, and media. Their worldwide network of journalists and editors keep customers up to speed on relevant global events. Thomson Reuters, the answer company. Crutchfield Dermatology, a full-service treatment center in Medispa in Egan. Their goal is to help you look good and feel great with beautiful skin. With service built around courtesy, dignity, and respect, Mayo-trained Dr. Charles Crutchfield personally treats each patient and is acknowledged as one of the nation's best physicians. Firefly Credit Union, with locations throughout the Twin Cities, has proudly served Minnesotans since 1925. Firefly guides its members forward by delivering customized financial solutions to improve their lives in all aspects of banking. Firefly Credit Union, they light the way with life illuminated. Edina Eye, physicians and surgeons, a division of Twin Cities Eye Consultants, has proudly served the Twin Cities for more than 55 years. Now in seven convenient locations, using the most advanced technology combined with human touch, Edina Eye offers comprehensive services for dedicated specialists committed to excellence with innovative procedures and expertise for the most advanced eye care. Welcome. Welcome to a strange, another strange access to democracy uh, where we are Zooming rather than sitting in our beautiful studio. And we have with us today a return guest, Tom Egan of Egan. And it's not everybody that had a city named after him, but uh, uh, that's the way it is. Now, Tom, a welcome to back to Access to Democracy. Thank you, Alan. It's great uh, being involved in one of these strange events. And they get, str <laughs> they get stranger and stranger. I mean, we started this one four minutes late simply because I wasn't getting cooperation from the, the equipment here, but here we are. So uh, <clears throat> let's go. Let's, let's do a little intro of Tom Egan, although certainly uh, everybody is familiar with you. You have over four decades of public service. You have been the mayor of the city of Egan, a little bit different spelling. You have been a member of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, you have been so involved in metropolitan government of, of so many kinds that uh, it boggles the mind. And you suddenly decided, I don't know if it was suddenly or not, or your wife held a gun to your head, said, it's time for us it's time to get out of public service something like that so this will be your last hurrah as a commissioner uh, for the county of dakota is that a fair uh, resume i i think you you assessed it very well alan thank you now uh during this time on the county board uh you've been chair of the board and let's talk a little bit about the county board. People are familiar with you. People are familiar with the city of Egan, where we have passed seamlessly from uh, really mayor to mayor to mayor uh, and maintained a wonderful, in terms of tax record, in terms of the cost. Uh, and that all started back with you. Uh, somehow or other, it, it has, put Egan and also now the county of Dakota in position where we have AAA bond ratings, uh, where we have no debt. I think the only county in the state that has no debt, although I don't know after this pandemic what the situation will be, but take it from there. Well, Alan, I, I think if you'd like, I'll, I'll concentrate on my service on the county board. I, I think most people within the third district, which is what I now represent it. It's broader than just the city of Egan. It includes Mendota Heights and the villages of Mendota and Lilydale. 
But uh, my service on, the, on this board, uh, most people are certainly familiar with the park system in Dakota County. They, many, many people go to Lebanon Hills. Uh, hopefully many people go to Whitetail Woods Regional Park, which is the uh, new park that we just brought online in the year 2014. They're familiar with our library system. I'm sure that they, they can't go anywhere without uh, driving on a county road and we're trying to maintain those systems. So the, these are things that the county does that most people are familiar with. But Alan, I, I think maybe the best way to familiarize people with what the county does might be to kind of introduce the county's functions with this COVID virus uh, that we're, we're dealing with. Well, because I, that would be a great place for us to start that. Well, I, I think it is because now this triggers a lot of activities that the county does that most people don't think about. Uh, the county performs well over 200 uh, services uh, in any given year. But when, when you're dealing with a, a horrible pandemic like we are with this COVID virus, what you're seeing implemented is a lot of different uh, departments under the community services division. We're seeing public health uh, really getting incredibly engaged in this with telemedicine and uh, we, we have to cancel all, all of our face-to-face uh, one-on-one -face, -on -one contact with people and so we have to deal with it uh, through telemedicine. There's so much stress involved in, in this uh, and we, uh, we are very heavily involved in, in mental health we're talking about uh, people losing their housing. We're talking about the homeless people that we have to provide housing for. We get very heavily involved in housing. We obviously have to get involved in uh, providing job opportunities for people. And Dakota County is very, very heavily in, uh, involved in job opportunities. We're seeing a lot of veteran services. Uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that we meet whatever the necessities are for the veterans. So all of these things under the auspices of the community services uh, division are, are coming to the surface, bubbling up, and, and people are beginning to see these things uh, where they might take them for granted and just concentrate on parks and, uh, uh, and the library and, and the transportation system otherwise. Well, we'll work our way down to the uh, pandemic, but uh, let, let's talk about, uh, for instance, you were very important in the Metropolitan Council for a number of years as well. Uh, talk about that for a moment. Well, I was, and you know, actually this goes back to the days of uh, when I was mayor of Egan. Uh, we were looking at the possibility of, of uh, uh, a, uh, a certain piece of legislation that would have called for tax base sharing, which would have been very painful for the city of Egan. Uh, Governor uh, Carlson actually vetoed the legislation and uh, Ted Mondale came up with a proposal uh, to substitute for that, but he didn't do it until a, a group of mayors met at what's called the Mayor's Summit Conference. And we came up with an idea for uh, livable communities. Now the implementing agency for livable, livable communities is the Metropolitan Council. And when I served on the Metropolitan Council, I was involved in, in uh, the uh, award of a lot of grant money to communities for uh, brownfield uh, cleanup, uh, redevelopment, and all sorts of other things under the auspices of livable, livable communities. And it's one of the things uh, that I uh, was most proud of when I served on the Metropolitan Council. And of course, when you first uh, got involved, uh, the city of Egan was what, 18,000 or something like that? And it has grown now to uh, in excess of 68,000. And I guess we'll know better with the census this year, but it's really, really grown out. And it's grown out very, very favorably in terms of shopping, in terms of availability. Uh, Egan has everything except the hospital. And we do have a hospital right next door in Burnsville. But, uh, I guess the, the capping uh, aspect of all this is the fact that the Minnesota Vikings have their home here now, and uh, that has been a tremendous difference in, in the city, uh, which the county and the city work together for. Yes, yes. You know, honestly, the uh, speaking of the Vikings, you know, there's a lot of, so much history behind that parcel of land, Alan. 
uh, that was at one time a prospect for the dome stadium. That I, I don't think most people think that far back, but but uh, there were three sites uh, proposed for a dome stadium uh, before it was built uh, in downtown Minneapolis. So that site was first considered for that. It was considered for a racetrack. Matter of fact, there was a lot of environmental work that was done uh, uh, to prepare that land for the potential for a paramutual uh, racetrack, which eventually went to uh, Shakopee and now is Canterbury Downs. And eventually it became the headquarters for uh, Northwest Airlines and uh, Cray Research and uh, a number of other businesses. And of course, as we all know, the uh, Northwest uh, Air, uh, Airlines headquarters building has been raised. And uh, because of all the environmental work that had been previously done on that site, it became available for the Vikings. So we're, we're extremely happy that uh, the Vikings had that site and were able to move into Egan. And the Vikings have that site, which is not only uh, where they have a building, a uh, a museum, a Viking museum, not only where they have a stadium that seats, I think, uh, almost 7,000 people, not only that they have six practice fields, uh, there's also a hotel going up there, a, uh, a high-end hotel uh, of 338 rooms, and uh, it's still spreading out. There's going to be housing in there. There's going to be uh, commercial activity in there. It's an amazing, it's an amazing piece of property that formerly was Northwest Airlines, which went the way of uh, all flesh or all airlines. Uh, although at the present time, it looks like all airlines are in a lot of trouble. But uh, in any event, uh, all that was made possible during your tenure. And something we haven't talked about was the fact that you were very instrumental in bringing West Publishing to Egan. The West Publishing, which is now Thomson Reuters, which has a huge campus here, uh, and which, you know, at one point had 7,200 people working in that campus. Now, tell us a little bit about what went into bringing that here. Well, there, there's a, <laughs> a lot of history behind that as well, uh, Alan. When I first took office as a council member for the city of Egan. I was invited to a party in downtown St. Paul thrown by West Publishing uh, to celebrate the fact that West had built its book binding facility in Egan on a, a campus of well over 200 acres. Not much happened after that for, for quite a while. And then in my uh, first term as mayor, we received a preliminary uh, proposal for the development of that site. And on, the, on that proposal, this 200 plus acres, there was this obscure reference to a, a corporate campus shown on a little spot. And uh, uh, Steve Bryant from West Publishing was the presenter to us. And, and I asked Steve, I said, Steve, can you please explain what, what you mean by the, this corporate campus? And he said, well, we don't know yet, but uh, there's some possibility that we might be doing something there. Now this is in about 1990, Alan, and um, we, well, almost immediately after that presentation, we started talking in earnest with uh, West Publishing, with uh, Steve and Steve's immediate boss, uh, John Nassif, uh, who was a member of the board of the uh, West Publishing Company Board of Directors. And John made it abundantly clear to both myself and to Tom Hedges, who was then the city administrator of the city of Egan, that uh, West Publishing was not happy with the, the way they were being treated politically by the city of St. Paul, and they wanted to, to get out. They were dealing okay with Ramsey County, but St. Paul was giving them problems. And they were very, very interested in relocating their headquarters to Egan. Well, Tom and I worked very, very closely with John Nassif, and John worked very closely with his board, and he, he eventually convinced his board to agree to relocate their uh, their headquarters to the city of Egan. That was in uh, 1990. I believe it was late uh, later that year in 1990 that uh, the ground was actually broken and uh, West Publishing moved in. We all know that West has morphed. It went from West to Thompson, and then went from Thompson to Thompson Reuter, which it is now. 
one of the leading uh, corporations in terms of information in the world. Yes, uh, it is. West, which primarily dealt with lawyers, now they deal with professionals of all sorts. And uh, John, the late John Nassau, who was so active and uh, in so many areas, including charities, uh, was instrumental in convincing them to come here. Uh, they did, and actually, uh, for better or for worse, that's what brought me to Egan, uh, uh, as we think about it now. And of course, you live in Egan. Uh, I live in Egan, uh, only four miles from uh, the what was the West and is now the Thompson Reuters location, which is where we have our beautiful studios. And uh, if we ever get back to them, I don't know. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll, we'll zoom along uh, like this. But you, you've been involved in a lot of other things also. Uh, the Oak Ridge townhouses, you had a big involvement with that. Well, Alan, there was a time when I actually thought that my identification as the mayor of Egan was going to be uh, based on my participation in that. The uh, Dakota County Housing and Re Redevelopment Authority, which now is known as the Dakota County Community Development Authority, came in with a, its first proposal in all of Dakota County, its first proposal for a workforce housing project in the city of Egan. It was going to be at this Oak Ridge Lake location. It was actually going to call for the downzoning of the land uh, from uh, medium density uh, apartments to lower density. It was actually going to reduce the the uh, density on the property. It came before the city council and it passed on a three-two basis. On three voted in favor, two voted against. But because it required rezoning, that required a four-fifths vote. We couldn't get the fourth vote, so it it failed for that reason. On, tra it was tragically unfortunate, but uh, the Dakota, Dakota County Housing and Redevelopment Authority had to sue the city of Egan. They sued the city. They, uh, the three of us that voted in favor of the project did not fight the lawsuit. We decided uh, not to contest it. It went by default. The uh, Housing and Redevelopment Authority won. That's a very strange way to win a development project, but uh, that is what happened. And a it became lot of a workforce program, right? Yes, yes, and, and almost every person that that lived in that uh, and does today live in that project uh, are working probably in um, most likely in in the retail area uh, and you know they're they're starting out they're young people they're, in some cases they're young professionals but they're almost all employed we've had virtually no problem uh, with that subdivision that uh, development matter of fact Dakota County has replicated that numerous times all over the county since then. They've all been very, very successful. And there's a lot of similarity between that project and the project that uh, Dakota County worked on with the city of Egan called Lincoln Place. It's a housing project for young adults, 18 to 23, that are emancipated to try and provide them with housing uh, uh, as they it eventually developed themselves into their work. Emancipated, but in, but in need of housing, and yes. in need of affordable housing. Yes. And as a matter of fact, it's one of several affordable housing units that we have here in the city of Egan. I mean, Egan has a little bit of everything. It's proximity to the airport, uh, which now sits fallow most of the time. But speaking of the airport, uh, you also had a lot to do with the airport zoning and noise control, uh, making sure that uh, the early days with the, the prop jet in particular, which caused a lot of hardship for people with the noise, uh, got controlled by runways. Well, Alan, Egan, because of its proximity to the airport, uh, is heavily impacted by the airport. We joined a national group called NOISE. NOISE is an acronym. It stands for National Organization to Ensure a Sound-Controlled Environment, NOISE. I eventually became president of NOISE, and I served as president for four years um, on, on their, their board. 
And uh, Egan worked very closely with the other communities uh, around the airport that are impacted by airport noise. And we worked with the airport to decide whether to expand the airport where it currently is or whether to relocate the airport to the southern part of Dakota County into the rural area. It, the, the process was known as the dual track process. And during the time of this dual track process, I was meeting constantly at the airport. Uh, I was making so many trips there, I, I almost thought I was working out at the airport for a long time. I, uh, based on the, the work that I did at the airport, I've actually had my deposition taken several, uh, several days in the last uh, several years because of some of the research that we did on, on the airport issues. So I was very, very heavily involved in a lot of the, uh, the work to uh, make a decision on whether the, the airport should be relocated or, or remain where it is. Now, zooming along as we are doing here now, uh, you also have been very much in environmental, not only with uh, Lebanon Hills Park, but also with the creation of White or Whitetail Woods Regional Park, uh, which you said was 2014. Yes. And one, one of many environmental uh, activities that you pursued. Well, we are so proud of Whitetail Woods Regional Park. You know, there was a parcel of land owned by a family called the Butler Trust. The Butler Trust uh, was a, a family owned trust. They were trying to market uh, that property. In terms of regional parks, uh, the, the land was relatively small. It was a little over 500 acres. Most uh, other regional parks are in excess of a thousand acres. But what was unique about this Butler Trust property, uh, Alan, is it's surrounded by DNR property, by um, wetland management property. It's, it's completely surrounded by several thousand acres of, of, of other land that, as you indicated, is being environmentally preserved. So we felt by developing a regional park like Whitetail Woods at this location was a, a, a very appropriate use. And uh, as it turns out, Whitetail Woods is the first new regional park located in Dakota County in uh, 30 or 40 years. And uh, that gave way to the Dakota County Regional Greenway System, did it not? Yes. We are extremely, you know, I'm a bicyclist. I, I, uh, I, I've always been a bicyclist. I love bike, uh, biking. And I'm extremely proud of the, uh, of the regional trailway system that we have developed. The, you know, our, our park system, Alan, we, we, uh, we're, we're, we're tr trying to concentrate on what we call places, three different things, great places, connected places, protected places. As you indicated, the protected places is where we're trying to work on uh, protecting the environment. Great places main, means that the parks uh, should have the enhancements that people want, but the connected places is what, what you're getting at with the regional trail system. We're trying to interconnect all of our parks with a trail system. So our goal is ultimately to surround the entire county of, of uh, Dakota County with a trail system that interconnects the entire county with 200 miles, hopefully, of regional trails. And another thing, uh, and I, I see that uh, our time is really moving here. You, you've had so many activities and so many things you've been involved in. It's tough to get it into a half hour interview, but the Westcott library system or the Dakota County library system, Westcott is being one of them, is an outstanding library system. Even in this time of pandemic, they have uh, set up a system where you can go reserve a book, go there and pick it up outside of the library. Uh, and uh, it keeps the library moving, even though the library is still closed and will be closed at least through the 18th of this month, I understand. That is so, that is so true, Alan. Uh, we are so proud, uh, you know, if it weren't for, for that, if it weren't for the, the COVID virus, the, the thing we would be most proud of is our iLab system, where you know, we're trying to uh, meet the technology uh, demands of the public. 
your your library today is not your grandmother's library of, of years of, of the past. We're trying to make sure that we meet the technological requirements of, of the public with our library system. And, and, uh, and it is outstanding. Now, uh, I, I want to ask you, what was the best moment of your career that pops into your head when I ask you that? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When, when I went to the mailbox, my first term as mayor of Egan, and I picked up the St. Paul newspaper and read the headlines, and the headline said, West Publishing Company is uh, moving from St. Paul to, to the city of Egan. That was a highlight that I knew I, I couldn't duplicate. It, it uh, probably was a highlight of my, my entire life. How about a worst moment, though? There had to be some where you really, uh, although you've got a lot more of your hair than I do, <clears throat> that you really, really tore your hair out over. Oh, there were. There were, you know, certainly a lot of frustrations involved uh, with the airport. Uh, we talked about the Oak Ridge issue. That was, uh, uh, there was a, a, a certain amount of acrimony involved in that. Uh, there was a certain amount of disappointment, uh, Alan, in uh, losing the uh, the racetrack. Uh, Egan, uh, Egan actually lost the racetrack on a 4-3 vote to the Shakopee facility. So there were some frustrations, but for the most part, uh, we got things done very well. In retrospect, losing uh, the racetrack, however, has provided us with the Vikings. And uh, there's no way you can equate the two of them. The Vikings is a tremendous, tremendous boost for the prestige and the city itself. You're absolutely correct. It, it was actually, losing was actually a win for the, for, uh, the city of Egan. And uh, with all the involvement that you've had, and here we are uh, talking about so many different things, uh, I can't believe that you're just going to step off the stage at the end of the year and uh, disappear into the woodwork. So what's in the future for Tom Egan? Well, for one thing, Alan, I, I have my wife Betty and I have moved into the Applewood Point uh, of, of Egan Cooperative, and I just got voted the vice president of our newly elected five-member board. That we're a very hands-on active board. Uh, that is going to occupy a lot of my time. I serve on the Intergenerational Living and Healthcare Board. We operate the Commons on Maris here in Egan and other facilities uh, in the Upper Midwest. Uh, I'm certainly uh, very uh, heavily engaged in, in Rotary, and I intend to do a lot more traveling than I had the opportunity to do before. So I, I simply look at my schedule going forward, and I, I don't know how I could do everything I, I want and plan on doing and still serve on the board. Well, I can understand that. And uh, you talk about traveling. Uh, what's one of your favorite locations that you want to get to that you haven't been to yet? I've got friends that are talking about possibly going to Normandy. Um, we uh, we were, if it weren't for this COVID virus, we were at least laying some preliminary plans to, to go there this year. Obviously, we can't. Um, I have a, a lot of other places in the United States that I would like to go to as, as well. I have relatives in Florida and relatives in uh, in Seattle in the uh, upper Northwest uh, that I, I want to be able to visit frequently. Well, one thing I know is we will miss the input uh, in terms of the municipal, uh, in terms of the county of Dakota, in terms of the city of Egan, of Tom Egan. I want to wish you well, congratulations on a really an incredible career. And we certainly, certainly hope that you won't disappear from the face of the public. It's not my intention to disappear, Ellen. Thank you, though. Thank you.